We are live. You may begin. Call your first witness. Plan of calls Hector Escobar. Mr. Escobar, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear. Okay. Let's go ahead and proceed. All right. Good afternoon, Mr. Escobar. Um, where you currently reside? Uh, right now, currently um, with my mom. I live in Mesquite and with my dad, Dallas, Texas. Okay. And were you in a motor vehicle collision on June 3rd of 2017? Correct. And are you the plaintiff in this case? Yes, sir. And where are you from? Um, Dallas, Texas. And are you currently employed? Yes, sir. Uh, that's CVS Pharmacy. Okay. And what do you do for CVS? Um, I do both. I work at the pharmacy department and the front store. Uh, currently mostly pharmacy. I mean, mostly a front store holidays. And how long have you been working for CVS? Um, 2016, no, 2015. And before our uh, motor vehicle collision, had you ever injured your neck before? No, sir. Before our motor vehicle collision, had you ever injured your back before? No. Before our collision, had you ever injured your, your left arm or shoulder area? No, sir. And what time did our uh, incident happen? Um, I clocked out like around 10 p.m. So it probably happened like around 10.05. Okay. And where were you coming from? Um, from work. And where were you headed? Um, I was heading to Burger King. Um, it's like, like no less than five minutes from there too. Okay. Were you about to grab some dinner? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, what was the weather like that evening? Uh, it's completely clear from what I know of. And what street were you traveling on? Uh, Peterson Lane. And is this a, a street you were familiar with? Yeah, it's, a, it's what I consider a shortcut to Burger King. I don't have to go around. And what were the, uh, the closest intersections on uh, Peterson? Um, one heading to the mall, which would be Noel, and then another one in front of it would be Monfort. Okay. So were you heading towards Noel or Monfort at the time of the accident? Uh, coming from Noel, heading to Monfort. And how many lanes are there on Peterson? Um, it's, it's two. It's, it's weird because the cars park on the side of them. There's cars still parking. It's kind of like if you're like in a house. You know those two lanes where you, you can still pass, but there's still house, there's still cars parked there. Okay. So, so you said two lanes. So is it one lane going each direction? Yeah. And you said the lanes are wide enough to where you can travel down the road, and there's also vehicles parked to your right. On the sides, yeah, on both sides. Was there any traffic that evening before the accident? No. Was it dark outside? <sighs> yeah. It was 10 p.m., so yeah. Were there any street lights there on Peterson? Oh, yeah, there's street lights, yeah. So is it a lit area? It's pretty lit, yeah. As we were traveling down Peterson, were there vehicles parked on a, to your right? Yeah. And immediately before the accident occurred, what were you approaching? Uh, what do you mean? Like, was there any kind of building or anything that you were approaching? No, I was still in the middle of the roads. I mean, um, beyond the parking space, the, the roads, there's houses on, on, both say, on both sides. I mean, apartments, I'm sorry. Okay. And can you describe how the accident occurred? Uh, yeah, I was coming from work, which is on Noel Road. I did a left turn towards Peterson Lane and I just go straight until I reach Montford, which is where Burger King's located. But um, halfway as, as I'm heading towards Montford, I, um, I come near like on a, an apartment driveway. And then that's where she came out. I don't know if she looked ahead of the two cars. I don't think she did because the accident would never happen. Okay. So you said you were driving, approaching a, a, a driveway for an apartment complex? Yeah. And then as you're out of the, the 
as you're passing the driveway, is that when the defendant's vehicle pulled out? Yeah. Uh, I wasn't, I was, I wasn't even, I was approaching it. So I never passed the driveway. What part of your vehicle was impacted? Um, the top right of like the, um, basically from the, my bumper, the top right of the bumper all the way to like the, um, my passenger seat um, door. Okay. So your front passenger side? Yeah. And you said from the bumper all the way to your passenger door? Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? Yeah, correct. And before the accident occurred, did, did you see the defendant's vehicle at all? No, I didn't. How would you describe the force of the impact? Um, very harsher than a, a bumper car. Okay. Like very hard, like... I can't really describe it. Like I was, I was so surprised when it happened. Were you wearing your seatbelt? Oh yeah. Did the force of the impact cause your vehicle to go into the, the lane to your left? Yeah, it pushed me directly to the middle between the lanes. Eventually, so I don't block the, the lanes. I, I was forcing it towards the left side to park it. Okay, so after the the collision occurred, you, you pulled your vehicle over to the left side to not block traffic? Yeah. And when the impact occurred, did your body move inside your vehicle? Yes, sir. How did your body move? Um, well, you know, when you're holding the wheel, I went towards this side. So all of this was impacted towards my door side. Okay. And when you say all of this, you were gesturing toward your left arm? Elbow. I don't know how my neck, honestly, or I guess, moving too fast or something. I really don't, I can't explain that part. Okay. Just the elbow part. I know the elbow and then all of this hit. Okay. So your elbow hit your, your door or your window? The window. I honestly don't know what I hit. I know I hit something. Okay. And so earlier you testified after the impact occurred, you pulled your vehicle off to the side to not block traffic, correct? Correct. And then what did you do after that? Uh, from there, I went to go check on her. Um, the defendant, um, she came and then, out and then from there, we just try to exchange information. And did you call the police? Uh, I did and my dad did. Did you call your dad? Yeah, I, I never I never experienced anything like that. So I didn't, I didn't know how it worked. I just know the insurance part, that's it. So did your father come to the scene? Yeah, he came to the scene like 10 minutes later cause he lives like two blocks away. And you said he called the police? Yeah. And how long were you at the scene of the accident? <sighs> like two, maybe three hours. And where did you go after the accident? Directly to my dad's. I didn't even eat, I didn't eat anything that day or night. And how far away did your father live? Uh, like two blocks away. I mean, was your car able to make it to your father's house? <laughs> my dad just forced it. He told me to take his car and it would take mine. And uh, how did you feel when you woke up the next morning? Um, the next morning, I felt the next morning I felt pretty sore. Okay, where did you feel sore? Um, the elbow, definitely. Um, the back, it took like a couple of days. Um, the neck was was this next day. I did had a bruise in my bottom left of the like through the ab. I think I hit it through like where you grab this, the, um, you know, the handle for your door. Mm -hmm. I assumed I hit it there, but that was just like a little minor bruise. And did you feel any pain at the scene of the accident? No, um, I was just mostly shocked. The elbow, I felt it, but it didn't like bother me. Okay. It was just like, okay, it's gonna go away like a few minutes later. And then where's the first place you sought medical treatment? Uh, at first I didn't, um, well, at first I waited a while. I thought everything would just go away, but eventually it just, I just, it never disappeared. Just kept hanging around. So eventually, um, I got referred to a celebrity health, health clinic. Okay. And what kind of a provider is that? Um, chiropractic. Okay. And so what kind of treatment do they provide you at the chiropractor's office? 
Um, it was mostly a massage, like it would be machines where it gave me massage in the areas I needed. So the neck, the, the massage was mostly the neck and the back. The, the elbow, he'll just check it, he'll like massage it. And then he'll do some bone cracking stuff. And then he told me I'll come back the, my next schedule day. Okay. And bone cracking stuff, I think, can you explain what, what you mean by that? I don't know. He'll have me do some weird positions like this. And then he'll come behind me and grab, I don't know. Okay. I think they call those chiropractic adjustments. Does that sound familiar? Um, probably. Okay. And um, at this time, were you experiencing any pain in your, your left arm or your left shoulder? Uh, can you repeat that? At this time, were you experiencing any pain in your left arm or left shoulder? Like at the moment? What do you when mean? you're retreating. I'm sorry? When you were treating with the chiropractor? Um, on the elbow, no, eventually it disappeared. You know, I didn't, I didn't feel that. It was mostly just the back. And how long did you treat with the chiropractor? Um, like a month and a half. And did any other doctors, uh, or did you treat with any other doctors during this time? Uh, I didn't go anywhere else, but eventually that same clinic will have them, like their own doctors come in once a week. And then he'll, he looked at me once and prescribed some medicine. Okay. And was that a Dr. Uh, Oriano? I believe so. Okay. And you said he, he examined you and prescribed some medication? Yes, sir. Did you take the medication? Uh, just for a few weeks, like just a couple of weeks. And then at the end of your uh, month and a half of chiropractic treatment, how are you feeling? Uh, I started feeling good to the point where um, I didn't feel like I needed to go. And as you sit here today, are you still experiencing any pain or uh, injuries as a result of the accident? Um, of the accident, no. And while you were still treating with the chiropractor, were you also still working at CVS? Yeah. Were you put on any, any work restrictions or, or light duty during this time? Uh, for the fir um, for the first month, yeah, I just couldn't oh. lift heavy stuff or or really try to bend much. Okay, so you couldn't bend or lift heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and correct. How long, and how long did that last? Uh, for his restrictions, just like a month. After a month, I tried to uh, I did like my own thing. I kind of like secretly like lifted boxes or something without him knowing. And so, was your uh, employer able to accommodate your restrictions? Employment, yeah. Um, I usually do truck. I like receive truck from. Um, I receive truck, so it'll be like a like a load, and then um, when those when the truck came in, I just stayed at the register or something to back up. Okay. Is there anything else that was uh, that you were unable to do, or that was more difficult to do while you were treating for your injuries? Can you repeat that one more time? Yes. Is there anything else that was more difficult for you to do or that you were unable to do while you were treating for your injuries? Um, like physically or maybe like... Yeah, physically. Physically? Uh, no, not, I don't think that's much. Okay. So just your work restrictions? Yeah. So just bending down and, and lifting heavy objects? Yeah. Do you feel that you've recovered? Sorry, I, have, from your I have one thing to add on there, and I'm working out. Oh, okay. Jim, I forgot about that. How um, before the accident? How often would you work out? Um, I would I would have gone every work every um. I would go like three times a week, but um, eventually I moved out, and then I just canceled my gym membership. Okay. So it was like a month prior to the accident. I stopped going. Okay. And so were you able to work out while you were treating for your injuries? No, I wasn't allowed to. And have you started working out after you finished treatment? No, I had other surgeries that restrict me from that. Okay. Other surgeries unrelated to our accident, correct? correct. And so let's, let's kind of back up to immediately before the accident. So let's say one minute before the accident occurred, were you experiencing any pain in your neck? No. One minute before the accident occurred, were you experiencing any pain in your back? No, sir. 
one minute before the accident occurred, were you experiencing any pain in your left elbow or left arm? No. What do you think caused you your injuries? Jackson, <clears throat> he's not a qualified. Hold on. Don't give a medical diagnosis, but you can testify. <clears throat> you can answer the question. Oh, um, the impact of the accident. And who do you believe is responsible for causing the impact? Uh, the defendant. And why is that? Because um, I had the right of way. I didn't have no stop signs. It was just a clear road ahead of me. Okay. Pass the witness. Good afternoon, Mr. Escobar. Can you can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. And <clears throat> my name is Chad Archibald, and I represent Ms. Anawara, <clears throat> Minawara Ansar. Excuse me. Do you understand who I am and who I represent? Yes, sir. And you and I, we've never met before. Is that right? No, sir. All right. I, I've got a few questions for you to follow up after uh, your attorney asked a few questions. So first, I wanted to talk about your job at CVS. You said you've worked there since 2015. Is that right? Correct. And you've been consistently, uh, I'm sorry, what did you say your current title is? Uh, it's um, RX operation manager. Okay. So is that back in the pharmacy area? Uh, I do both on uh, pharmacy and front store. And back at the time of our accident in uh, June of 2017, what was your role at that point? It was the same. I was just a trainee at the pharmacy. Okay. And same, with that, sorry? I had the same title. It was just, uh, I was a trainee at the pharmacy. Okay. At the pharmacy department. And you testified that you were coming from work, correct? Correct. And how long did you work that day? Uh, seven hours. I was scheduled three to eight. But I left early because I was scheduled the next morning. You're scheduled three to eight a.m. Starting at three p.m. Three to eleven, but I left at ten p.m. because the next morning I had to come back at seven a.m. And <clears throat> you testified that you clocked out at about ten at ten p.m. and then headed to Burger King, right? Correct. And you were taking a shortcut to Burger King, correct? Correct. <clears throat> And prior to the accident, how regularly would you be unloading and loading the truck? Uh, we get trucks every week, so once a week. And what kind of things would you unload? You would unload things like uh, cases of water, load, right? We load pallets, rocos, dollies. Um, I think like almost everything that other stores get. Okay. Uh, and on that shortcut that you took to Burger King, you testified that there were cars parked on your right. Is that correct? On both sides, on my right side and in the other lane too. So both sides of the street, there were cars parked? Yeah, there's cars parked on both sides. And you said there were numerous cars parked along the street, correct? Correct. And you testified that you did not see my client prior to the impact, right? No, I didn't. No, you didn't testify to that or no, you didn't see her? I didn't see her. You didn't see her, okay. And you, you said that, when was the very first instant that you saw my client's vehicle? On the impact. Okay. <clears throat> and it was a, a well-lit road, correct? Correct. And you had your, your headlights on? Correct. Okay. And you testified that you don't think that my client saw your vehicle either, right? Uh, I'm not sure if she saw me. Okay, but you didn't see her, right? No, I didn't see her. And you testified that the collision was harsher than a bumper car, is that what you said? Correct. And what made you specifically key in on bumper cars well um at the moment that's the best example i had i didn't have any other examples i don't i really never i never had any anything like that it's just the first thing that came in my head like the carnival is always like two blocks away from there at the valley view mall too so i don't know it's just the first thing that i thought of so before the impact happened if you didn't see my client her vehicle specifically, you didn't see what she was doing inside of her vehicle, correct? Sorry? 
you if you didn't see my client's vehicle, you could not then see what she was doing inside of her vehicle, could you? No, I couldn't. And you have no idea as to how she was driving her car, right? No clue. And you have no personal knowledge as to whether she was doing any one thing or the other, right? No, I didn't. I couldn't see her. Okay. And did you apply your brakes to avoid the collision? Mm, I, I, I couldn't. I was already, by the time I saw her, it was we're already connected. Okay. And you testified that your body moved inside the vehicle and your, your elbow hit something. Is that right? Is that what you said? Correct. And, and what body parts did you say you injured? I don't think you said that actually. Um, my elbow. My uh, left elbow. Um, Is that it? No, um, my back, um, this part of my neck, my left side of the neck. And then I had a, a little minor bruise on my left ab. Okay, so you only injured your left elbow, the left side of your neck, and which part of your back? The, the middle back. Middle back, and you did not injure your lower back, did you? Lower, um, I didn't know there's a difference. I guess that's what I meant, the lower side of it. Okay, so what, is it the middle back or is it the lower back? The lower. Okay. So you're not sure which part of your back you injured, is that? Yeah, I don't remember. It was like three years ago. Okay. I just remember the back part. And it was just close. after, go sorry, go ahead. It was, it was close to the hip. That's what I remember close to the hip. I don't really know if you consider that close to the back the lower or the middle so would it be fair to say that you did not injure your entire spine oh, my entire oh no no okay i know all right so just after the impact you said that you called your dad correct correct and you did not call 911 but he did right correct and was your dad at the scene at any point did he come to see you at the scene of the accident yeah. he came like five ten minutes after i called him okay and did he call 911 in front of you? Yeah. So he, you called your dad and he came to the scene and then you guys called 911. Is that right? Yeah. And when the police came, you told them you were not injured. Isn't that right? Uh, when he called, we, we told him we didn't, he asked if we needed an ambulance. We said no. He asked if we needed a tow truck. We said yes for the, for the defendant. And you did not go see a paramedic or no paramedic came to the scene to check you out, did they? That day, no. And you never went to the ER that night, did you? That night, no. And you worked a full shift the next day, too, didn't you? Correct. Okay. And you weren't limited in any restrictions as far as limited uh, light duty or anything like that on the day after the accident, were you? Um, for that day, I think I was just at the registers. So I didn't, I wasn't doing much. I was just standing, helping customers. I wasn't so lifting you anything or... So you did not have any work restrictions the day after the accident? They know. Right. And you, jumping back a little bit, one minute after the accident, did you feel any pain in your neck? Can you repeat that? One minute after the accident, did you feel any pain in your neck? Uh, after that, no. I just felt the elbow impact. I didn't think much of it. And you did not hit your left shoulder on anything, correct? Shoulder, no. Okay. And you testified that you waited how long until you went to the chiropractor? Mm, I talked to a lawyer like, uh, I want to say like a week and a half later. So you went to a lawyer before you went to a medical professional. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Did a medical doctor refer you to the chiropractor? Can you repeat that? Did a medical doctor refer you to the chiropractor? Medical doctor, no. Did you see a medical doctor at any point before you saw Dr. Horleno? No. Okay. And in fact, when Dr. Horleno visited you, you, you testified that he just was a doctor that worked at the clinic and he just showed up a, a, a while later, right? Yeah, he showed up um, like three days after like my, after I registered. Okay. Or so let's talk about... Let's talk about that initial visit with the chiropractor. Uh, did you uh, have any intake paperwork as a new patient that you had to fill out? Yeah. 
And did you fill it out yourself? Yeah. And when you got there, did you read it all? Did I read it all? Right. It would just be like my personal information, like my name, my address. It would be like personal information. So they didn't give you any documents to review before you started treatment. Is that what you're saying? No. They just did like an x-ray or something. I don't remember what exams they did, but they didn't really check me. You didn't receive an x-ray in this treatment though, did you? When the doctor came, he did. So your testimony today is that you received an x-ray, is that right? On the, I wanna say on the, honestly, I don't remember. I remember the doctor, he reviewed me. I don't remember exactly what, what exams he did. I'm kind of mixing it up with my, with my other, other current stuff I'm going with. And when you say current stuff, you're talking about things that are not related to this accident, right? Correct. What are those issues? Um, I had a surgery on my knee, like uh, two years ago, and then and, that, uh, and then a month ago I had an MRI in my stomach. And both your knee and your stomach are completely, totally, and absolutely unrelated to this accident, right? Correct. Okay. So let me ask you again, did you receive any x-rays in this treatment? I don't remember. Would it refresh your memory if I showed you your deposition transcript from 2018? Um, I wouldn't ring a bell either. Your Honor, may we approach? Maybe we had like the medical history. I don't, I really don't know. I can't say yes or no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and I'm gonna uh, take you guys to a breakout room. So everyone else stay here. I need the bailiff to go ahead and take over the courtroom. You just need to watch the jury. Or actually, Judge Purdy, if you could go ahead and take over the room. So if you're here. Um, okay. Judge Purdy, I'm back. Okay, are you guys, are the attorneys back? Mr. Maldonado, are you back? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Archibald, is Mr. Archibald back? I don't see him. Here he comes. There he goes. Okay, let me just uh, mention something to the jurors. Can you guys all hear me okay? Uh, to speed the trial along, we pre-admitted certain exhibits that will be downloaded into your devices. Uh, I think there was five exhibits. Is that correct, Mr. Maldonado? Yes, Your Honor. 
though the plaintiff has pre-admitted five exhibits, I don't think the defendant has pre-admitted any exhibits at this point. So That's correct. is that correct? Okay. So, um, and then I think, are you going to pull up a deposition, Mr. Archibald? Is that what you're doing? Yes, your honor. So let, let me, before you do that, let me just kind of explain to the jury what a deposition is. Uh, deposition is something very common in civil cases. It's an oral statement taken under oath. Um, it's usually of witnesses, either the parties or uh, other types of witnesses. Uh, you're to treat the, the testimony as if it was live testimony. So it has the same force and effect as if the witness was here live. Uh, I think you're going to, Mr. Archibald is going to show you uh, some previous testimony from this witness and you can make a determination if you think it's uh, the previous testimony is in, inconsistent or consistent. And if it is inconsistent, whether or not that is, uh, uh, affects your assessment of credibility. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. All right, Mr. Archibald, I have enabled uh, screen, screen share. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> so, Mr. Escobar, uh, before we took that little break, we were talking about whether or not you had taken, had any x-rays taken. And, and earlier, you were unclear. Uh, okay. Would it help if I refreshed your memory with your deposition transcript from yeah, June? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure but, myself remember more than I do. I'm sorry, say that again? Yeah, I'm, um, yeah, I'll, re I'll believe my past self. He'll probably remember more than I do because it was like three years ago. Okay, so you do remember having your deposition taken, correct? Yeah, like two years ago, I want to say. Right, it, it has been some time. I'll get, I'll give you that. Um, but you do remember that actually happening, right? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Ha yeah. And you remember that your attorney was there, and the attorney representing Miss Ansar at the time was there, right? Correct. And you swore the same oath that you swore today as you, when you took the witness stand, right? Correct. The swear to tell the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth, right? Correct. <clears throat> and on, do you remember being asked if you had taken any x-rays or had any x-rays? Do you remember that specifically? No. Okay. Permission to approach the witness, Your Honor? You may. Okay, thank you. Uh, well. Rather than show you the entire document all at once, I'll show you the snippet from page 42 of your deposition transcript that was taken on June 13th, 2018. Yes, I, I heard it, Your Honor. If, you, if you're having a problem share screening, you can also just read it if you'd like. I'll share screen. Okay. Is it? Is it showing? No, uh, no. Oh, you're no. I've enabled no. it, so I, I'm not sure what's. Maybe it's because it's spotlighted. Let me unspot. Okay, try now. I. It still says stop presenting. All right, let me try it again. All right, wait a minute. Juror number three has left the screen. Let me just wait for him to come back. There he is. Okay. Go ahead. You can share now. All right. There we go. I was afraid it was the iPad, Your Honor. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Oh yeah. If you have the if you have the iPad coming, just take a break. Just let us know. I think that is. I think that is them. Okay, go ahead and uh, let's take a quick break. Uh, just go and uh, grab it if you can. Okay. Let's just wait for a second.
We'll just wait for juror number three to get back. You guys want to stand up and stretch? We always do that in the courtroom. All right, juror number two is stretching. Anybody else want to stretch? Everybody stretch. Oh, arr. Hopefully juror number three will be coming back. Has anyone else uh, had their iPad delivered today yet? Nobody? No, not yet. Okay, I'm back. I have the iPad. Great, great. Okay, let's uh, go back on the record. Uh, you may proceed, Mr. Archibald. Thank you, Your Honor. Is my uh, snippet still sharing? It is. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Escobar, have you had a chance to read the SNP portion of your deposition transcript? Yeah, I saw it. And does that refresh your memory as to whether or not you received any x-rays or? Correct. So did you receive any x-rays in this treatment? Uh, I guess not. Okay. And you testified that you only saw Dr. Horleno once, correct? Correct. And that's how long into treatment did you see Dr. Horolano? I mean, like when he'll personally attend me, it was just once, as I mentioned, he'll come once a week. So I saw him every week. He was just personally attending me once during the whole treatments. And that treatment, when did you actually see him that, that when did he actually treat you? What do you mean? Like how you said you've seen him multiple times. So is he just a staff doctor? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he's just a doctor that comes. I don't know if that clinic has multiple multiple um, clinics around the Metroplex. I'm not sure. I just know he came to that specific clinic once a week. And he only treated you one time directly, correct? Yeah. Okay. And you testified that he gave you a prescription and that one visit, correct? Correct. And you said that you used it for a couple of weeks, is that right? Yeah. And have you ever testified differently? Um, I don't remember. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the same. I do remember that, just one medicine. And you never treated with any other doctor outside of the celebrity healthcare facility, correct? No. You never went to any, sorry, was that no, not correct? Or no, you didn't treat with anybody? No, I didn't treat with anyone. So the only facility, the only physical building that you went to was the celebrity healthcare facility, right? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> and you did not injure your left shoulder, correct? Shoulder, no. And you did not injure your right shoulder, correct? No. And you testified that you stopped feeling pain about a month and a half later correct. into treatment, right? Correct. And did you still continue to treat though? Isn't that right? Uh, just for like another week. I honestly don't remember. After I start feeling pain, I went for like one more week, I believe. And then from there, I just stopped. And why did you continue treating if you needed to, if you didn't feel any pain? Well, when I first, when um, they already had a plan for me for two months. Okay, so you continue to treat despite feeling no more pain. Isn't that right? Just for like a week. Okay. And were you asked the same or similar question? Were you asked if you were still in pain when you were done with a chiropractor before? 
um every day they'll ask me how's the pains doing eventually yeah though they'll, they'll, every day they'll ask me okay and you testified that you continued treating for a week after you you said that you felt no more pain i want to say a week and how many visits did you have in that week every week i had like oh in that one specific week i can't remember i want to say i did the full whatever was on my schedule Okay. And when did they create that schedule? That was created on the first visit, wasn't it? The first visit, yeah. And they had a set schedule from beginning to end as far as how long you would need to treat, how many times you would need to treat, and what kind of treatment you would receive. Isn't that right? Yeah, correct. I think, I believe in half of the treatments, there was like a diagnostic part. I believe so. Like, I don't honestly remember that part. And did anybody give you a diagnosis at any point? Um... Like machine wise, I don't think so. I don't think I had an MRI or anything like that. I think it would just be a guy who will like personally like go to a certain area, who do some weird stretches on it, telling me my movements. Like one through 10, how do you feel the movement? Is it smooth? So ask me all sorts of questions. Okay. And you told the chiropractor that you weren't feeling any pain anymore at a certain point, correct? Correct. And that chiropractor told you to continue treating despite not feeling any pain, right? Correct. And did they tell you why? Uh, I asked him. He just, he, it's a doctor. I didn't really, I questioned him, but not too much. I just went with his word. He says that it can come back or something. So why did you keep going to treatment if you were not as in I, pain anymore? As I mentioned, he gave me some excuses that, um, that if I thought the pain can come back or whatever. And did you ever actually receive a work release from the doctor, a physical piece of paper? Work release? Right, the putting you on light duty or restricted work. Oh yeah, uh, um, I don't know. I just, no, I just told my manager that this is what my doctor told me. But you didn't have a piece of paper to give to your manager, correct? I don't know if he gave me one. I don't remember. I just remember not handing one to my to my boss. Okay. Miss, I'm sorry, Miss Irving. You need to start your video. Sorry about that. Go ahead. And I believe you testified that uh, while you were at work, you would still lift a few things secretly without your manager knowing. Is that right? Mm, for my manager? I don't think so. Well, just earlier when your attorney was asking you questions, you said that you would lift boxes secretly without him knowing. Not, not, depends on the boxes. It wasn't like heavy crate boxes. It'll be like, like a box full of vials or something. Okay. So despite being on the work restrictions you claim you were on, you were still lifting boxes secretly. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Okay, sorry. <clears throat> and when you were done treating with the chiropractor, uh, whose decision was it to conclude treatment? Was it yours or was it the chiropractor's decision? Um, repeat that. Whose decision was it to conclude treatment at the end of your time with the chiropractor? Yours or somebody else's? Uh, me. And why was that? I have a thing with doctors where uh, after a certain amount of time, I don't like going anymore. I get tired of it. Like I did the I did the same thing with my other surgeries. Like I had like I had like um training for my knee so I can get back to normal. After like two weeks, I stopped going too, because it was just like minor workouts that I can just do at home. I don't I didn't feel comfortable wasting my mom's gas from Mesquite all the way to Richardson or Plano. Every like three times a week. Okay. And have you received a bill from the chiropractor at your personal address? No, sir. And you hadn't seen the bills from your chiropractor until the day of your deposition. Isn't that right? Um, I don't remember if I saw it in my dis disposition. I may have. I I'm not too sure. Have you seen a bill from the chiropractor since your deposition? I, I don't think I ever saw one. And how about Dr. Horleno? Have you seen a bill from his office? No. Have you seen any kind of bill at all 
from any provider that you saw or from Celebrity Healthcare? No, sir. And have you heard from anybody at Celebrity Healthcare since the last day that you treated with them? No, sir. And since your last date that you treated with any provider from Celebrity Healthcare, have you received any treatment for your neck, your left elbow, or your mid to low back? That one spot in your spine. Uh, repeat that again. That's fair. Uh, and since your last date with Celebrity Healthcare, have you seen any medical provider of any kind for any treatment for your neck, your left elbow, and the part of your spine that you think you injured in this accident? Uh, no. Okay. And you used to work out, isn't that right? Correct. And you stopped working out a month prior to the accident? Correct. And you haven't been back to the gym since the accident, right? Correct. And I see that you're wearing glasses today. Do you know if you're nearsighted or farsighted? Farsighted. Far side, so you can see things clear the further away that they are? No, I can see stuff clear. I can see clear stuff uh, close to me. I can't see far. Okay. Right. okay. And do you have to wear your glasses or, or contacts all day, every day? Uh, I prefer to. Uh, uh, driving, I, I definitely have to. Um, school, I definitely have to. Work, not really. I'll pass witness. Just a, a few follow-up questions, uh, Mr. Escobar. Um, you said that the pain in your neck was kind of off to one side. Can you like point out and show the jury where the pain was? Right here. Okay. How, how far down on your neck did it go? Um, to like right here. Okay. Is, and then you also- Ms. Irving, you need to start your uh, video again. Just a second, Mr. Maldonado. Mr. Irving, are you there? Sorry about that. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mr. Maldonado. Excuse me, Judge. Did she say something? I have a constable trying to, I guess, contact me about the iPad. I need to give him a call back. Who's that? This is juror number one, Miss Bowie. Uh, okay, he's he's call. Is he on the phone right now? No, I didn't answer the call. Okay, why, why don't you uh, wait until we're finished with this witness and then uh, okay. we'll take, you can call. It's just, it's just a few more questions. Um, Good. And can you show the jury where on your back, your mid or lower back that you're experiencing the pain? Judge, this juror four, I have a constable at the door. Okay, we need to, I'm sorry, we need to take a uh, quick break, let him. Okay. All right, let's just break. And who is that, juror number four? Okay. That was juror number four, Judge. Do you want juror uh, number one, Mrs. Bowie, I guess, to make her call during this break? Yeah, why don't you make the call right now? We'll just take a quick, uh, everybody take a bathroom break. We'll take a quick five-minute break.